Good morning. It's Saturday, December 17th, 2016, and in the headlines on today's Washington Journal, President Barack Obama gave his end-of-the-year press conference yesterday, where he highlighted the achievements of his eight years in the White House, as well as addressed his biggest challenges during that time. The issue of Russian computer hacks targeting Democratic poli political organizations and operatives before the presidential election dominated the press conference, and the president laid the blame for the cyber intrusions with Russian President Vladimir Putin. But Obama also talked about his legacy, from implementation of the Affordable Care Act to cutting the deficit and killing Osama bin Laden. So our question for viewers today, what are your, what are your views on President Obama's legacy? Republicans can call 202-748-8001. Democrats can call 202-748-8000. Independents can call 202-748-8002. And you can also reach us on social media, on Twitter at C-SPANWJ, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash C-SPAN. Good morning, and let's take a look a, li a little more about what President Obama said yesterday from today's Washington Post. President Obama used one of the last news conferences of his presidency Friday to, to lament the country's deep political divisions, asserting that they make the United States vulnerable to foreign manipulation, and to warn President-elect Donald Trump to be less casual in his dealings with foreign leaders. Uh, the Post goes on to say that uh, while for the past five weeks Obama has tried to hide his disappointment about Trump's win and to remain publicly upbeat about the country and its institutions, on Friday the optimistic facade began to crack. He worried that the political discourse had been degraded to a point where, quote, everything is under suspicion and everybody is corrupt and everybody is doing things for partisan reasons and all of our institutions are, you know, full of malevolent actors. Let's take a look a little bit more about what President Obama said yesterday about the partisan divide. If fake news that's being released by some foreign government is almost identical to reports that are being issued through partisan news venues, then it's not surprising that that foreign propaganda will have a greater effect, because it doesn't seem that far-fetched compared to some of the other stuff that folks are hearing from domestic uh, propagandists. To the extent that our political dialogue is such where everything's under suspicion, and everybody's corrupt, and everybody is doing things for partisan reasons, and all of our institutions uh, are, uh, you know, full of malevolent actors. It, 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 that's the storyline that's being uh, put out there. Uh, by whatever party is out of power, uh, then when a foreign government introduces that same argument with facts that are made up, voters uh, who've been listening to that stuff for years, who've been getting that stuff every day from talk radio or other venues, they're going to believe it. So. If we, if we want to really reduce foreign influence on our elections, then we better think about how to make sure that our, our political process, uh, our political dialogue uh, is stronger than it's been. Larry is on our Democratic line calling from Hernando, Mississippi. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. And what do you think uh, about the president's legacy? I think the president's legacy will be great. Not right now because uh, it's so partisan right now. The Republican, the, anything he does right now, the Republican will not give him any credit. He said this economy when it was over the cliff and we were losing 800,000 jobs a month. You, uh, just imagine that, 800,000 jobs a month. And he, would, and he won't get any credit for killing Bill Laden. It, the Republicans now, I don't trust any of them. 
Look what they're doing in North Carolina. It's just ridiculous. Have a nice day. All right. Ed's calling in from Lawrenceville, Georgia, on our Republican line. Ed, what do you think of the president's legacy? Well, I do know that only 30 percent of Americans um, feel like um, things got better for them. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, I have to say, though, his legacy is going to be that um, he's just about destroyed the Democrat Party. Uh, I, I know I have a lot of friends that are Democrats that are that are now Republicans, and uh, uh, I know in 18 the Democrats are 25 senators are going to go up uh, against only eight Republican senators um, have to go uh, in 18. So uh, I think the Democrats are in a bad way. Well, Ed, let me ask you this: What is it? How is that uh, the blame of the president as opposed to uh, other candidates or even the most recent Democratic presidential nominee? Well, uh, I'm in the I'm a uh, 14 percent. I'm in the 14 percent, and so you know uh, I have a better kind of a better view of what's going on. Um, the the majority of people right now um, are more optimistic that Donald Trump is coming in, and. Uh, I mean, uh, look why how Obama's he's running away to Hawaii for two weeks. Now think about it: the Russians and the uh, uh, Chinese, and he's going to Hawaii for two weeks. This is another reason why the Democrats are losing. Okay, one of the uh, policies that President Obama touted yesterday was implementation of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, more from the Post on that. President Obama used his final pre-Christmas news conference to tout anew the popularity of the sprawling health care law that his successor wants to abolish, announcing that signups in Affordable Care Act marketplaces just hit an all-time record for a single day. The president said uh, six 670,000 Americans chose health care plans in states relying on healthcare.gov on Thursday, the original deadline to have ACA coverage in place by January 1st. That is 70,000 more than the enrollment on the same date last year, a record at that time. Uh, his announcement was part of a flurry of ACA statistics that the administration has released this week to portray the contention that President-elect Donald Trump and Republican congressional leaders will pay a price in the public opinion if they carry out their pledge to repeal the law and replace it with more conservative policies. Doug's calling in on our Democratic line from Fairfax, South Dakota. Good morning, Doug. Doug, are you there? All right, we're going to go on to Don. Don's calling in from Salinas, California, on our Republican line. A uh, very early good morning to you, Don. Hi. Uh, yep. Uh, well, the legacy that I see President Obama leaving us is a legacy of uh, green energy that's done nothing but raise our uh, electric bill and raise our deficit with China, where all the green energy products are made. Also, oh, President Obama has left us a legacy of a White House administration that believed in real fake news, like Hands Up, Don't Shoot from Ferguson, that cost people's lives and livelihoods. And uh, also a legacy from President Obama of uh, overdoing it with the transgenders to the, fact, to the point where a grown man can shower with a little girl as long as he pretends he's a woman. Well, Don, let me ask you this. Is there anything that the president did in the last eight years that uh, you think was good for the country, that you think was an improvement? That I think President Obama did that I think was an, an improvement? If I had to think real hard, uh, the best thing he ever did was to marry Michelle Obama. She was She's one of our greatest first ladies, I think, okay. when it comes to... Okay, let's take a look at uh, more of what the president had to say about his domestic achievements. You know, as I was preparing to take office, the unemployment rate was on its way to 10 percent. Today it's at 4.6 percent, the lowest in nearly a decade. We've seen the longest streak of job growth on record, and wages have grown faster over the past few years than at any time in the past 40. When I came into office, 44 million people were uninsured. 
Today, we've covered more than 20 million of them. For the first time in our history, more than 90 percent of Americans are insured. In fact, yesterday was the biggest day ever for healthcare.gov. More than 670,000 Americans signed up to get covered, and more are signing up by the day. We've cut our dependence on foreign oil by more than half, doubled production of renewable energy, enacted the most sweeping reform since FDR to protect consumers and prevent a crisis on Wall Street from punishing Main Street ever again. None of these actions stifled growth as critics predicted. Instead, the stock market has nearly tripled. Since I signed Obamacare into law, our businesses have added more than 15 million new jobs. And the economy is undoubtedly more durable than it was in the days when we relied on oil from unstable nations and banks took risky bets with your money. Add it all up, and last year the poverty rate fell at the fastest rate in almost 50 years, while the median household income grew at the fastest rate on record. In fact, income gains were actually larger for households at the bottom and the middle than for those at the top. And we've done all this while cutting our deficits by nearly two-thirds and protecting vital investments that grow the middle class. Charlie's on our Republican line from Herkimer, New York. Good morning, Charlie. Yes, good morning. You know, in 2008, we warned the country, do not elect a president who began his political career in the home of terrorists, William Ayers and Bernadine Dorn, because he hates us. Here is Obama's legacy. The Democrats have said that they're going to work to keep Obama's policies intact. It's because of his unpopular policies is why the Democrats were so badly beaten in the 2010 and 2014 midterms. Do you know that in state houses across the country, the Democrats have lost 1,000 seats because of Obama's policy. So good. They want to keep them in place. They will continue to lose. Okay, Kathleen is calling in uh, from Colorado on our Democratic line. Kathleen, what do you think about President Obama's legacy? Yeah, I think President Obama, uh, on many issues, really gave it uh, uh, an incredible try, and, and he was successful with uh, Obamacare, although many of us would uh, had wished that he would have gone for single payer instead of negotiating right away. And then, so that, I mean, I think that's a huge success, and climate change efforts, huge success, um, even though Republicans stood in his way at basically every turn. However, his policies, as well as uh, Hillary Clinton's influence on pushing interventions in Libya and Syria, have just been catastrophic for the people living in those countries. Yesterday, President Obama said that they had done everything to, he used the word, halt the civil war in Syria. And that was completely, basically, I wanted to say inaccurate, but it was really a lie. Um, well, Kathleen, what, you, what would you have preferred the president do in terms of the policy in Syria? Well, like right now, I mean, I've done a great deal of reading. People uh, listening to your program can go to The Nation and Google Last Chance for Peace in Syria, written in 2012, uh, written by their editors. And at that point, and I read many articles at Foreign Policy and um, The Nation and The Guardian and The Independent um, about – uh, negotiations at the UN at that point. Uh, the UN head uh, negotiator was trying to work with Assad. Okay, he's a, a dictator. He's committed crimes. But we have now, the Obama administration has committed crimes by supporting, by arming unknown rebels in Syria, and many of those arms ending up in the hands of Al Qaeda and ISIS. So when he tr said that he tried to halt that civil war, it's completely a lie. They fueled, now I know I've read a great deal that Hillary Clinton influenced those decisions in very big ways, but those have those decisions have been 
disastrous for the people in those countries. And Obama, if he had any integrity on this issue, would accept uh, responsibility for some of those horrific decisions that he's made. All right, a little more about uh, Obama's legacy in Syria from Reuters, a uh, piece that says Syria's civil war uh, to mar President Obama's legacy says the uh, fall of the last rebel-held areas in the Syrian city of Aleppo could seal the fate of the, quote, Obama doctrine, uh, deepening the world's worst humanitarian crisis in decades and staining U.S. President Barack Obama's legacy with the U.S.-aligned rebels facing defeat by government forces backed by Russia and Iran. Obama's light footprint approach to the Syrian conflict will suffer a serious blow weeks before he hands power to President-elect Donald Trump on January 20th. Cora is calling in from Fort Washington, Maryland on our Democratic line. Cora, what do you think about the president's uh, legacy? Yes, good morning. I uh, think that the president's legacy is going to go down in history as one of the best presidents that the USA has ever had. President Obama was not only our president, but I think that he was sent as a messenger for all to see within the USA and abroad of what unity, real unity, could could look like. That unity that helps all people, regardless of their race, ethnicity, love. He is a man of peace. I just feel bad because President Obama was never given the opportunity from day one, there was uh, this, this goal to bring him down, not compromise with him. And that's what our Republican brothers and sisters have done. But everything that is negative is all because of President Obama. And we all know that that's not true. Well, Cora, let me, let me ask you this. Is there anything from the last eight years uh, from the president's administration that was disappointing to you or that you wish he had uh, taken a different approach? I think the President Obama took all the approaches that he could take. He was or still is our president. He even went to the Republican Party to try to compromise on a lot of things. They never compromised with him. So the things that he did get passed, thank God, like Obamacare, that saved many lives, including my own. Now they're about to sweep that under the rug. But Obamacare helped a lot of people in this country. Okay. And I a little bit more from uh, Time Magazine about the president's legacy and how research shows that it's shaped by people's political views. Uh, it says it varies greatly by party affiliation. According to a study by the Pew Research Center, Americans' perceptions of the president vary greatly along party lines. According to Pew, a U.S. president's average job approval rating has not uh, been as polarized as Obama's since President Dwight Eisenhower. A president leaving office with low expectations is hardly new. More Americans overall thought President George W. Bush left a below average legacy, but the partisan difference, differences appear to be more pronounced than in years past, according to the report. For example, about 78 percent of Democrats and left-leaning independents believe Obama's accomplishments will outweigh his favors when, historic, when historians look back on his presidency, but only 13 percent of Republicans agree. John's calling in on our independent line from Beacon Falls, Connecticut. John, what do you think about the president's legacy? I think, uh, you know, Obama had a couple of great accomplishments, you know, such as state-owned health care, you, know, uh, you know, he won a Peace Prize, but this man, he's going to be remembered internationally as a warmonger. This man, he accepts a Nobel Peace Prize, but then proceeds to use robots to blow up people thousands of miles away. And I, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound peaceful, you know. And we've seen in recent years, you know, a rise in the prices of Obamacare, a concept which was unthinkable at its inception. You know, we, we um, you know. Well, John, let me ask you this. It, do you think that it is better, I mean, Republicans are uh, proposing to repeal 
uh, the Affordable Care Act. Would you rather see Congress work together to try to fix the problems that you're pointing out with it, or do you think that uh, that Congress needs to start from scratch on that? Well, look, I have afford like I'm part of the Affordable Care, uh, Health Care Act, you know. But the thing is, with these rising rates, they need to be fixed. There are people out there who need health care, but they're not getting it because it's becoming just as expensive as the other ones. You know, the, the promise behind Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act was no rising rates and you're going to get a top-notch health care system. Well, we haven't, I mean, America's got the best health care system in the world, but we've been seeing rising rates, so... What are we What are we going to do with that? Okay. Thomas is calling in from Aurora, Illinois, in our independent line. Thomas, what do you think of the president's legacy? Good morning, everybody. Well, it's not only President Obama's legacy. It's the legacy of presidents and every uh, uh, branch of power since the 1970s, I believe it was. I'm 65 years old. And that is the Holocaust, the the murder of uh, the voiceless infants in the legalization of something that should be illegal. And that is the murder of babies through abortion. There was a time when the Supreme Court first said that abortion was legal because of the health of the mother, but that has been desensitized all the way to where it's just a, a method of birth control, and now to where it's just that uh, a, a woman has the right to do with her body with what she may. But if following that logic, it would follow suit that if a woman has a right to do what a woman wants to do with her body and abort the baby as a method of birth control, well, then it would follow suit that a man should be able to have the right to do with his body what he may and abort making child support. And this Holocaust of the voiceless infants is bringing back a uh, murderous karma, what goes around comes around. Spirituality calls it you reap what you sow. And the murder of these babies has taken us into a desensitization of, of Holocaust uh, uh, degrees. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other headlines today uh, from CNN. Pentagon demands uh, that China return a U.S. underwater drone. Uh, the report says the Pentagon is demanding that China return an unlawfully seized underwater drone after a Chinese warship took the device from waters near a U.S. oceanographic vessel. Uh, quote, we call upon China to return our UUV immediately and comply with all of its obligations under international law, Pentagon Press Secretary Peter Cook said in a statement using the abbreviation for unmanned underwater vehicle. The latest encounter in international waters in the South China Sea region, uh, the UN, the USNS uh, Bowich was sailing uh, about 100 miles off the Philippine port at Subic Bay when the incident occurred, according to the official. Uh, the vessel had stopped in the water to pick up two underwater, underwater drones. At that point, the Ch a Chinese naval ship that had been shadowing the Bowditch put the small boat into the wa put a small boat into the water. That boat came up alongside the Chinese crew and took one of the drones. We have Jason calling in from uh, Ohio on our Republican line. Jason, what do you think about the president's legacy? Well, I have a few things to say. Um, and they're not going to, you know, people aren't going to be happy. The majority of people aren't going to be happy with what I have to say, but I want to say them. I feel that the president has been a coward as far as far as I'm concerned um, in his in his policies as far as making uh, statements, deadlines with Syria, and making deals with Iran, uh, letting freeing five of the world's most heinous criminals from uh, Guantanamo Bay uh, in exchange for a person who deserted the army in favor of uh, Bo Bergdahl. 
um, lighting up the White House with a rainbow in favor of gay marriage in a country which is founded on the principles of Christianity. Um, I don't feel that's right. My generation, a majority of my generation, I'm 32 years old, feels the same way. We don't feel like the president has, has left good taste, you know, in the mouth of America. Jason, is there anything that the president has done in the last eight years that you approve of? Any any policies that you think uh, helped make America better? Uh, I believe he, he has, his, his best intentions with the uh, and stabilization of, the, you know, Obamacare and uh, for everyone to have health care. The best intentions were there. And it didn't, you know, it hasn't run smoothly, but, you know, that's, that's one major thing. And uh, I just, he hasn't, he hasn't done much. What what has fallen under under him has been done uh, through Congress. Uh, the majority of his, you know, decisions he's done by himself have negative results as far as as far as I'm concerned, and the majority of people around me feel the same way. All right, Francis is calling in from New London, New Hampshire, on our independent line. Francis, what do you think about President Obama's legacy? I think he will go down as our greatest president. He is, um, I don't know how, he, I know he's not a, a sport hero, but in my mind he is because to work with that Congress and to get so much done every day, I, I mean, he just kept going and going and going, and he got us health care that we need. Uh, the unemployment rate is way, way down from what it was when he took over. Um, I felt as though our country was at constant war when he took over, and I felt at peace for the eight years, and I feel so privileged. Uh, also, um, I think he should be the next candidate for the Peace Prize. <laughs> um, but he has kept himself in remembering that he's human and um, he's equal to all of us and he's used his brilliant mind to um, do a job that most people would have just given up on <laughs> with all the um, the um, <clears throat> all the all the the things that were against him with our Congress and with um, and, then, and I hope that he is able to have a wonderful retirement, or I hope he does. I hope he stays involved. Um, and I, I, I feel like we have been at peace, and that uh, it's because of him. All right, Sam is calling in from Coastal Springs, Miss, Mississippi, on our Republican line. Good morning, Sam. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I think he's going to go down as the most divisive president we've ever had. I think he made the Justice Department uh, the most politically uh, active uh, Justice Department we've ever had. And I really I really don't understand these people talking about the low unemployment rate. They do realize that 93, 94 million people have actually dropped out, so they're not being counted. So in reality, the, uh, the uh, unemployment rate is probably around 8, 9, 10 percent. And, uh, you know, the uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, honestly, you think that that is really affordable for folks who really uh, need it? Yeah, the ones that are getting the help from the government to pay for their uh, premiums, that's fine. But not for the people who, you know, that are actually having to pay, you know, uh, like it's like $12,000 freaking deductible for them to be able to use it. And uh, I just think the guy has just sit up there and lied. I think he's very divisive on race, uh, uh, religion. Well, Sam, let me understand. let me ask you. You talked about that issue of divisiveness. Do you think that the the blame for divisiveness is uh, lies mostly with the president, or all with the president, or do other folks uh, share the blame in that? Well, there's some folks that share the blame in it, but I think he's made uh, race as a lot of a lot of black journalists and 
black radio uh, folks like Joe Madison, uh, that's all they talk about is race, but he doesn't look at the facts of something that's happened before he makes a commitment or makes a comment. Uh, and I think that he's just made the race relations worse than it ever has been. And, uh, you know, as far as his legacy and everything, you know, uh, the Democrats have got their butts whooped in, the, you know, 2010, 14, and then recently the presidential election. So if somebody's legacy is so great, why did all that happen? I just think that this guy is a total liar. And uh, I think his, you know, everybody was hoping he might do a good thing when he came in. But he's, as it turns out, he's just another Jesse Jackson. All right. Uh, let's, let's take a look a, a little bit more at yesterday's press conference where uh, President Obama laid out his uh, foreign policy achievements. When I came into office, we were in the midst of two wars. Now nearly 180,000 troops are down to 15,000. Bin Laden, rather than being at large, uh, has been taken off the battlefield along with thousands of other terrorists. Over the past eight years, no foreign terrorist organization has sex, uh, successfully executed an attack on our homeland that was directed from overseas. Through diplomacy, we've ensured that Iran cannot obtain a nuclear weapon without going to war with Iran. We opened up a new chapter with the people of Cuba and we brought nearly 200 nations together around a climate agreement that could very well save this planet for our kids. And almost every country on Earth sees America as stronger and more respected today than they did eight years ago. Jeffrey's on our Democratic line from Auburn, New York. Jeffrey, what do you think about the president's legacy? Good morning. Um, I'd like to preface this by saying I've been a lifelong Democrat. I've never voted for a Republican. And yet, um, I think there is a fix to um, Obamacare, as they put it. Um, and I'm going to praise uh, Richard Nixon, uh, believe it or not, as a lifelong Democrat. He had a solution to uh, high inflation rate and um, his problems in his administration were um, solved by a wage price freeze. And I believe this could be applied uh, to the pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies in this ramp rampant hyperinflation. Uh, the hyperinflation of some drugs by 200, 500 percent is ridiculous and insane, and there needs to be regulation. I realize the current Republicans do not believe in regulation at all, and uh, Democrats believe in rational, reasonable regulations. We could regulate the pharmaceutical industry, and we can regulate the 2,000-something um, insurance companies providing currently, uh, which is a ridiculous amount of numbers. It could be done by uh, half a dozen or a dozen insurance companies, uh, well, but most Jeff, people don't. Jeffrey, let me ask you a question. Uh, so in that case, if, if regulations is what was needed, do you think that that's something that should have been in the Affordable Care Act uh, to begin with? Uh, is that something that, that the president overlooked? No, I think it was partisan politics. I think the loyal opposition, the Republican Party, put a lot of poison pills into the legislation and wrote the legislation slanted towards the pharmaceutical and the insurance industries. And uh, before I leave, I want to uh, make a separate point that's uh, for Obama, and um, that is Richard Nixon also created the EPA. And it is insane that the Republican Party does not believe in protecting our environment. It is their person, Richard Nixon, that created the EPA, and they're so against regulation that they would destroy the earth and destroy the country, environmentally speaking, by deregulating and letting a uh, drill baby drill mentality uh, look at Oklahoma and the earthquakes. We don't want fracking in the Finger Lakes. And uh, this is the people that we've elected. Okay. Uh, Let's take a little bit, uh, take a look at what uh, President-elect Donald Trump has said about uh, what might happen to President Obama's legacy uh, once President-elect Trump takes office. According to CNN, uh, President-elect Donald Trump says he isn't set on dismantling President Barack Obama's legacy. 
but wants to streamline federal agencies' interactions with businesses. Asked on Fox News Sunday uh, by host Chris Wallace if he's going to, quote, take a wrecking ball to the Obama legacy, Trump quickly answered, no, no, no. I don't want to do that at all, he said. I just want what's right. Uh, he said agencies include uh, Trump's comments come after he appointed heads of several agencies, including the Health and Human Services, Labor and the Environmental Protection Agencies that have uh, been strident critics of the Obama administration policies. Trump says his appointments aren't about dismantling Obama's legacy, but are intended to streamline businesses' interaction with the government, particularly the EPA. Uh, he said, quote, EPA, you can't get things approved. I mean, people are waiting in line for 15 years before they get rejected, okay? That's why people don't want to invest in this country, Trump said. Clara is calling in from Tennessee and our Republican line. Good morning, Clara. Good morning. And, uh, and what do you think I, of the president's? Like, Go ahead. I'm not. I'm not pleased at all with what he's done, and I'm. Not, I can't possibly, in this brief period of time, get into everything that causes me to come to that decision. But I will say that Obamacare is a great concern to me. But I find him very hypocritical now to stand in before the news cameras and talk about Putin being a dictator when he sat and made nice with Castro in Cuba and opened all of that up. For, and none of us had a say about that. I don't like his apology tour. I don't like the way he did his business with Iran. I find him to be very hypocritical. And then he used our tax dollars to try to interfere with Israel's elections, not to mention what uh, him uh, listening in on Andrea Merkel's conversations. Right now, I find him to be such a hypocrite. I'm really, uh, I really don't believe that his favorabilities are as high as the press reports them to be, because statistically, uh, they only, they only poll the people that have their opinions have. And I have their same beliefs. Well, Clara, I let me. They, is there anything that the president has done in the last eight years that you approve of? Any policy that uh, you think was positive? This is what I like about the president. He has a beautiful smile. All right. We have Spence calling in from Clarksburg, West Virginia, on our Democratic line. Good morning, Spence. Hey, God bless you all. I'll tell you what, some people just need prayer. I, I, looking back at this president, what a class act uh, to, to, to have a real family in the White House. And I sure hope that they keep Michelle Obama's uh, garden that's there. It represents farmers throughout the, the United States. You see what happens to the garden, and we'll kind of know what's going to happen, period. But in my lifetime, I have never seen a prettier first lady and a classy group of human beings, human beings, that led this nation, and, and I'm so proud of them. And I know it's in ways it may have hurt the Democratic Party in different ways and this and that, but I'll tell you what, I'll take it. Mr. Obama has been a class act, and we're going to miss him. God bless you all. Have a nice day. All right, and we are talking to our viewers about President Obama's legacy. Republicans can call 202-748-8001. Democrats, 202-748-8000. And independents can call 202 202- 748-8002, a, a little bit more from yesterday's press conference where the president uh, laid the blame for recent uh, computer hackings of Democratic organizations and individuals uh, at the feet of Vladimir Putin. A Wall Street Journal reports that President Barack Obama on Friday implicated Russian President Vladimir Putin in cyber attacks designed to hurt Democrats in last month's election, and he promised a, quote, methodical retaliation. Mr. Obama said the U.S. intelligence he has seen, quote, gives me great confidence, end quote, that Russia hacked the Democratic National Committee and the email account of Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta. Asked if he believed the Russian leader authorized the attacks, he said, quote, not much happens in Russia without Vladimir Putin. Kathy's on our Republican line, calling in from Montgomery, Texas. Kathy, what do you think of the president's legacy? Um, he's going to go down as the great divider. For instance, Black Lives Matter against uh, our police department, Mexican against American, Muslim against Christian, union against non-union, 
straight people against gay people, et cetera, et cetera. I can go on and on. He is the worst president in the United States history, and I'm ashamed of him. And he, he really needs to get some prayer in his life. Thank you. Ruby is calling in from Atlanta on our Democratic line. Good morning, Ruby. Good morning. How are you? I am good. What do you think about the, the president's legacy? How do you think he'll be remembered? It would be awesome, fantastic. I'm, I'm really disappointed that people are calling in. They can't say one good thing about him, and they out they blame everything on President Obama. President Obama actually could have done many, many more great things, but the Republican Party from the get-go said that they would not support him, that he would get one term. Well, he got two terms. That's the statement right there. I love President Obama and Michelle, and God bless him, and the country is blessed because he served us those eight years. Well, Ruby, let me, let me ask you this. You're singing the president's praises. Is there anything that he's done in the last eight years that you haven't approved of or, or that, didn't, uh, that you think was not the right decision for the, comp for the country? No, I don't, because I think he did the best that he could uh, for the country, and he did it for all people. I don't think it was uh, race-oriented. He did it for all people. Okay. A little bit more about the president's comments uh, on Russia yesterday. Uh, he said the president was, uh, more from the Wall Street Journal, it says the president was vague about what form a U.S. response may take uh, to the cyber attacks. With just five weeks left in office in, uh, to order any retaliation, the president said some of it may be public, while other aspects could be covert or only known by Moscow. Among the president's options are declassifying more information uh, or leveling charges at any people it believes carried out the attacks or assisted in them. Let's take a look a little bit more about what the president said about Russia uh, and what it can and cannot do to undermine the United States. This is one of those situations where uh, unless the American people genuinely think that the professionals in the CIA the FBI, our entire intelligence infrastructure, many of whom, by the way, served in previous administrations and who are Republicans, uh, are less trustworthy than the Russians, then uh, People should pay attention to what our intelligence agencies say. This is part of what I meant when I, when I said that we've got to think about what's happening to our political culture here. The Russians can't change us or significantly weaken us. They are a smaller country. They are a weaker country. Their economy doesn't produce anything that anybody wants to buy except oil and gas and arms. They don't innovate, but they can impact us if we lose track of who we are. They can impact us if we abandon our values. Mr. Putin can weaken us just like he's trying to weaken Europe if we start buying into notions that it's okay to intimidate the press or lock up dissidents or discriminate against people because of their faith or what they look like. Tom's calling from Erie, Pennsylvania on our independent line. Tom, what do you think about the president's legacy? I think that um, he's the best man that's been in the White House since John Kennedy. And he certainly has the most attractive family that's been in the White House in the last two centuries. I think that um, the, um, the, the, what the Republicans did with him was absolutely disgraceful. In fact, I used to be a Republican until about midway through Obama's first term. Um, and, I, and I seen the way they were, they were uh, treating the man. Um, and, and as uh, uh, unfortunately, I just woke up, so I can't think real straight. But um, 
the the um, the the the, uh, the the stupidity of the the the, the bigotry of these people um, who who can't see a, a damn thing good that the man has done he he pulled this country out, out of the uh, out of the financial mess that the uh, that the republicans created um the, the my my only um, a, um, uh, a criticism of the guy is that he doesn't he did not he he, did, he acted like he didn't have enough street smarts to realize the the uh, the trash that he was dealing with. Um, the Republicans have made a, a, a science out of misinformation, and um, um, and and and, and uh, Obama and the Democrats did not um, did not call them out constantly, and that's the only thing that you can do with bigoted bullies. Is that you have to you have to call them out constantly, and you have to constantly publicize the crap that they're doing. Okay, a little bit more uh, in other headlines about the uh, Donald Trump transition uh, to the White House from Politico. Uh, Donald Trump will not accept briefings on his businesses uh, while serving as president. Politico reports, and he's open to limits on his ability to talk business with his two adult sons slated to run the company, according to a Trump spokesperson. Uh, but as details emerge on, Trump, uh, on Mr. Trump's plan to separate his private interests from the public, key questions remain unanswered. Uh, Mr. Trump also wants a way to return to his business when his White House days are over, and he doesn't want anyone outside the family owning the rights to the Trump name while he's away. Uh, Mr. Trump's friends, business associates, and transition staff tell Politico, uh, those are among the issues delaying Mr. Trump's grand plan to protect his administration from conflicts of interest. That's a plan uh, that he was to detail this month, and he postponed that announcement until January. Cedric's calling in from Midland, Texas on our Republican line. Good morning, Cedric. Hi, I'm black and I'm conservative from I'm not a bigot, but listen, I disagree with President Obama. I like his family. I like President Obama personally. But he never brought in a budget his last eight years. His administration was very, very handed, heavy handed on regulation that kept growth down. And another thing about the president, we had to bring in a sequester to basically control spending. And I wish that the Democrat, I used to be a Democrat, but I left the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party became so just so liberal and so out of touch when it comes to race, gender, and jobs in America. The, look, I really like President Obama personally, but this administration from Jay Johnson and Homeland Security, I'm glad Donald Trump put a general in. We don't need a politician like Jay Johnson and Homeland Security who actually does not, you know, basically his job is to keep people out of the country who are not supposed to be in the country, not to just basically bring them in. So this is a problem I had with that administration. Well, Cedric, let me, let me ask you this. It, it does, uh, is any of the blame for some of the problems that you listed uh, shared with Congress? For example, the sequester came about uh, in, in, as part of a standoff between the White House and Congress and was never intended to be implemented. It was meant to be uh, an incentive to, to come to an agreement. Uh, listen, I agree with that, but the problem that we had a, uh, that sequester is because every time the President Obama's administration committed a budget, it was just so unbelievably large that they basically had to put in the sequester to say, hey, look, we got to keep this administration under control or they'll spin this into oblivion. Okay, we are taking your calls about the president's legacy. Again, Republicans can call 202 748 8001. Democrats, 202-748-8000, Independence, 202-748-8002. Pat's calling from Houston, Texas on our Democratic line. Hi, Pat. Hello. Thank you for taking my call. I would, I would like to say that, to me, President Obama has the epitome of class. My mom used to try to explain to me as a child, and I didn't understand what it meant. She would say, class is in the blood. It is not for sale. You don't have to have money. You only have to have class, and the other things will come. Well, compared to Donald Trump, now I understand what she means. He has all the money in the world and no class. 
He could buy it, but he doesn't have it. He wasn't born with it. It's not in his blood to have it. So that's why he doesn't have it, and he can't get it ever. I don't care how much money he has, he will never have class. And class is a, can be given to a poor person. A poor person can enter a room and show themselves in a way that will let you know that there's something there. They don't have any money, but there's something there inside of them. President Obama may not be as rich as he is, but he is the epitome of class. And that you have to be born with. You okay. cannot purchase. Okay. okay. Uh, from The Hill today, uh, it reports that 48 states have added jobs during President Obama's tenure. Uh, according to The Hill, almost every state in the nation has added jobs during President Obama's tenure, though a stark imbalance exists between urban centers and rural regions uh, struggling to recover uh, from the worst economic downturn in decades. The uneven recovery has upended the American political map as areas where the recovery has lagged have punished Democrats and rewarded Republicans even as the unemployment rate fell and jobs rebounded under President Obama. Rural voters overwhelmingly favored Republican Donald Trump in November's election. Nationally, only two states saw job losses during Obama's tenure. Those are Wyoming and New Mexico. Mark is calling in from Hyannis, Massachusetts, on our independent line. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Thank you for the, taking my call. Um, I, I think that uh, President Obama has done a great job. And uh, like the caller from here, he said, I think he's going to go down as the greatest president since JFK, hands down. I mean, history will decide it. And all the callers that hate, hate every all his policies and hate everything he's done are just negative, you know, do little they don't they don't really want to progress in their own right. They just want to keep everything um the one one thing that I, I don't agree with him on and it was similar to kind of what J F K did was how he belittled Russia. I mean I, I think it's pretty funny that everybody was complaining about Hillary Clinton's emails and now you had the CIA and FBI talking about, you know, Russia intruding on our election, and everybody, you know, we want to, you know, take their side on it. It's ridiculous. So that's the only thing. I think we should have just laid off the rhetoric. But other than that, it's the greatest president of JFK. Thank you. Vincent is calling in from McDonough, Georgia, on our Democratic line. Vincent, what do you think about the president's legacy? Well, I think he did an outstanding job, and I'm surprised at the calls that came in thus far that they can't recognize that. I mean, during the time when he started, he, he picked up a big mess uh, coming in. He saved the uh, auto the, uh, the auto industry. Uh, he he started the health care uh, plan, and and I think people need to realize the more they get into this plan, the the uh, the lower the uh, deductibles will become. But if you don't all get in, it's going to stay high. So uh, they're trying to find ways to not say that he did a great job, you know, but I'm going to tell you something, he did it anyway, and everybody can see uh, through uh, through history. So the talk is just talk, but uh, but but what really speaks loud is the thing that he's actually done to change the, uh, 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 change the country around. Well, Vincent, let, let me ask you a little bit about this, like the, the report in the Hill that uh, we just heard shows that the in, if, when it comes to the economy, for example, things are uneven. The people who don't live in urban centers aren't doing uh, as well as before. Do you think that the blame for that uh, is at least in part with the White House? Well, you know, also, uh, that, well, each state has also had a choice to make some changes in their own in their own state. They refuse to, to accept any assistance from President Obama trying to make any changes for the infrastructure to to, to increase jobs. He he had he was going to give them some money so that they could put money into their own bridges and roads and things like that. A lot of them did not accept it. If we all remember that, a lot of the states did not accept that money. And if they did, they didn't put it where they need to put it. So that would help to boost the economy. It also would help boost more jobs at that time. So so I don't want to hear them tell, uh, complain about he's not trying to help. He's trying to help. What is, what's, what's the problem is the greed, the money is that, that, that stands in these positions of leadership over our country right now is where it's all about. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you, Trump is going to take this country down because of the fact that, that that this greed is going to get in the way 
and it's going to cause us to go backwards. All the all the things that we've done to go forward is going to be going backwards. You know, uh, McDonald at uh, uh, Governor, uh, I'm sorry, Senator McDonald at, uh, out of Kentucky. He made a comment that's that's the that was his his only intention is to make sure that he's only be a one term president. Well, it didn't work, but he's working against them. So who else? How, how many more are working against him to show that this, so that he won't uh, be successful? Uh, bipartisan. He's trying to he's trying to work together on both sides of the uh, both sides of the fence. But when those don't want to work and they make it a point that they're not going to work with them, well, come on now. I mean, you have to you have to give every president a chance, and I and, and I would do the same with with, with President. Trump, it will, uh, when he gets to the point, but once we see that things going backwards, who wants to support that? We need to go forward. And a lot of things are changing. That's going to go. It's going to take us centuries, centuries behind. When we need to move centuries forward, and that's okay. what I'm thinking. Okay, let's take a look uh, at what President Obama said about the danger of seeing everything through a partisan lens. There, there was a survey some of you saw where. Now this is just one poll, but. Pretty credible source. 37% of Republican voters <coughs> approve of Putin. Over a third of Republican voters approve of Vladimir Putin, the former head of the KGB. Ronald Reagan would roll over in his grave. And how did that happen? It happened in part because for too long, everything that happens in this town, everything that's said is seen through the lens of, does this help or hurt us relative to Democrats or relative to President Obama? And Unless that changes, we're going to continue to be vulnerable to foreign influence because we've lost track of what it is that we're about and what we stand for. Steve's on our Republican line from Rochester, New York. Hi, Steve. Hi. How you doing today? Well, anyway, my comments on Obama is that the Chicago issue where all the minorities, I'm black and I'm a Republican, all the kids were getting killed there. He didn't do a thing. He did nothing. As far as the poor people concerned, he did nothing while he was there. He did nothing. He was to me. He was the worst president. At first, when I first accepted him, I, I was I had tears in eyes for a black president. Then after a while, when I see his policies, they were horrible. It, it just made me upset, and I, I can't believe it. If people say he's a great president, he did nothing. And also, he has been weak. We've been a laughing stock all across the United States. I mean, all over four countries. People didn't even have respect for us because of his policies. Well, Steve, yeah. let me ask you this. You mentioned the crime issue and the situation in Chicago. Uh, how much of the blame is that with the president and how much of it is it with local officials in Chicago who are dealing with the, the crime wave there while at the same time in other parts of the country, crime is falling, according to federal statistics. I agree with you. It, it, it is the president. It is, it is some of the local officials. But some, most of the cities in the United States, they're all Democratic run. And so they, don't, they can't have tougher leader laws on people, like kids selling drugs, standing on the corner, all these things like that. This is a problem that could have been done because they don't have conservative views. They let them do anything to law. You can't stop them. You can't frisk them. You can't do anything. A lot of innocent young people have been getting killed across this United States, black kids, black or black crime. And, and everybody know it, and they look like it's not happening. It has been black or black crime. This is crazy. It, it's under his administration where he could have said, hey, this is going on. This was going on. I want to help kids, and I want to go have some programs for these kids. He didn't even implement any programs for them. Okay. Uh, some other headlines today uh, from the New York Times. Uh, it reports that a bid for a coffee uh, appointment with Ivanka Trump uh, was shut down uh, amid, as, amid questions about ethics. Uh, it says an auction offering a 45-minute private meeting with Ivanka Trump in exchange for a charitable donation was abruptly canceled Friday after questions were raised about the process by ethics experts. 
who said it appeared to offer bidders special access to the next first family. Uh, the auction had been running for 10 days, drawing 28 bids, the highest uh, reaching $72,888. The bidders included at least three businessmen who said in interviews that they saw their donations as an opportunity to have coffee with Ms. Trump to press her for information about her father's plans as president or to try to urge Mr. Trump to take up an issue important to them. Uh, in a statement, uh, Eric Trump, uh, who said that the, uh, that the uh, auction was done to benefit St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, uh, said uh, he expressed regret that the charity effort had to be called off. He said, quote, today the only people that lost are the children of St. Jude. Kathy's calling in from Tennessee on our Republican line. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning. And what do you think of the president's I legacy? I think he is the worst president we've probably ever had. He's divided this nation. He went in thinking that he was the president of the world. He gave a speech in Egypt, and then the Arab Spring kicked in. I believe he was a part of that, and I believe it was a complete failure. He's invited the brother of brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood in. He is just divided. He says now that he's helping with the transition, and he speaks on both sides of his mouth. He, he's horrible. Obamacare is a mess. If you've ever had to deal with it, which I'm in it, so I can verify it, it's a mess. It's horrible. It's high deductibles, high premiums. If you can get on the website, that keeps kicking you out. You can't keep your doctor. Good luck finding a doctor. And if you find one, good luck affording to go to it after you pay that kind of a premium. It's, he's been horrible. Kathy, are you concerned at all about what happens uh, now that uh, Congress is vowing and the president-elect are vowing to repeal the health care law altogether? Ma'am, this law needs to be repealed. If you, if you, Obviously, you don't have to deal with it. This law needs to be repealed. They can't nobody do worse than what it is now. You try to go on. I guess they think that everybody is hooked up to a computer because that's the only way you can get on it. And then it kicks you off. Okay. You, Jara Lynn is calling in uh, from Potomac, Maryland on our independent line. Good morning. Good morning. And what do you think about the um, president's legacy? Um, so I've been a government employee for, since January 2016, and I think his legacy is more, well, I, I, I got terminated now, so I don't really like the bureaucracy and the leadership, but, um, his legacy is like he, he wants to, he had too many goals that he wanted to do and didn't have the right policy, the right um, right people to do everything. So, and I also worked, I, I'm, I was working at the Census Bureau as a federal employee, and I also worked at the Department of Transportation and NIH, the National Institute of Health. So I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of experience in the government and the bureaucracy so but now in my role i got terminated because the i had a disability i didn't tell them and then the leadership didn't like the fact that um the fact that i had a disability and they i filed an equal employment opportunity complaint against them and then they they thought that was serious, so they terminated me. So, Geraldine, Jer do you see that as a, the fault of President Obama or the Obama administration? Ah, uh, it's the uh, it's the Obama administration because the it was the SES level. It was one of the SES level that terminated me. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, in uh, in today's Washington Post, 
uh, astronaut brothers Mark Kelly and Scott Kelly uh, wrote a remembrance to John Glenn, uh, the former uh, veteran senator as well as astronaut, the first man to circle uh, orbit the Earth. Uh, they close out the remembrance today with this. Uh, we had the good fortune of getting to know Glenn as he trained for that final mission uh, at NASA's uh, Johnson Space Center, talking about the 1998 uh, mission where uh, Glenn went back into space at the age of 77. Uh, he was gracious, humble, and a lot of fun. For a couple of young astronauts, showing up to work next to John Glenn was like a rookie playing baseball alongside Babe Ruth or a kid getting music lessons while Mozart composed in the living room, uh, in the living room next door. After all, it was the idealism and courage of the early Mercury pioneers such as Glenn that helped pave the way for Gemini, Apollo, Skylab, the Space Shuttle Program, the Hubble Space Telescope, the Mars, ro the Mars Rovers, and the International Space Center Station. As we stand on the precipice of a new era of exploration to Mars and beyond, it is possible only because of the gutsy pioneers and patriots such as Glenn who came first. And a programming note from C-SPAN, uh, John Glenn's memorial uh, will be taking place today at 2 p.m. Uh, at Ohio State University. The service, uh, uh, Glenn is a decorated U.S. Marine and aviator uh, and astronaut. And he was the first American to orbit the Earth and much later in life became the oldest person to travel to space. He represented Ohio in the U.S. Senate from 1974 to 1997. On October 29, 1998, at 77 years old, he became the oldest person to fly into space. He passed away on Thursday, December 8th, at the age of 95, uh, and he donated his personal and Senate papers uh, and other artifacts to Ohio State University, uh, and it grew into the John Glenn College of Public Affairs. You can see those services today on C-SPAN at 2 p.m. Up next, we have Natalie calling in from Houston on our Democratic line. I'm sorry, Hattie calling in from Houston. I apologize for that, Hattie. What do you think about the president's uh, legacy? Oh, he is just magnificent because I'm like, I'm, I was born in Tennessee when I heard this lady. And in Tennessee, I have relatives still there in, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, and, and now I'm here with my husband. He was a veteran. He have helped with insurance. I have um, a son that had a a ill and he got hit by a, a car when he was six, and his insurance was so high until President Obama got in. I'm I'm 74 years old now, and I've seen the going through the, the all the turmoil and everything where they're trying to do to him. And just like that gentleman talking about in Chicago, Illinois, he can't stop the police from killing. He can't stop them. He, he's up in the White House, and he tries his very best to um, do everything that he can. My insurance is, is, is cheaper for my son. He had a, a resistant headaches and everything else. And he was paying a month almost $300. Now he's down to $98. His deductible is, is lower that he can afford and everything else here. And, you know, they, the economy is lots better. He didn't save Republican houses right here that they had for they waiting for the, the Republican the first year. That's when he came back in the second year because he saved, I know, 10 people's houses that they were ready to close on. He did what he can do. His legacy is great and it could be better. And I heard 48 states they come is law, and I know here, as the black they still have, but they are law. You know they and think when I hear these people talk about this, I don't know where they are at. So um, he have did just whatever he could do. I have seen on there if he had to do his executive order, it would be worse. Because the Republican, they did everything, and I can hear this. If they had worked with him, it would have been a lot, a lot better. Okay. But Okay, and a programming note, uh, this weekend our C-SPAN Cities Tour uh, will uh, it takes Book TV and American History TV on the road to Scottsdale, Arizona as we explore its history and literary life. Uh, today at noon on C-SPAN 2's Book TV, all of our non-fiction book programming from the city will air together in one block, including a, visit, a vision to Alquin Brooks.
Alcuin or Alquinas was the most marvelous learned man in the period of, uh, in the period right before Charlemagne becomes Holy Roman Emperor. And I loved Alcuin because to me, we live in a new dark age. In spite of the proliferation of electronics and all of the things that are nice and we use all the time, uh, we see people shortchanging thought for, as you said, sound bites. Now, consequently, uh, we love the long haul, and with that, we have books. And with books, the joy, our joy, as you've seen in some parts of the shop, we have books that are $25 and $30 and $15. Then we have books that are in the thousands. But we find the right person for the right book, or I should say they find it, and in the process, we're changed forever. And you can find that in all of our programming, uh, book TV programming, cities, cities tour pieces at cspan.org slash cities tour. Uh, up next, we have George. He's calling in from Ocala, Florida on our Republican line. Good morning, George. Yes, good morning. And I have to tell you that you do a great job. You're my favorite moderator now and very easy to look at, I might add, with all due respect. Uh, okay. I don't think President Obama ever spoke the word republic. We are a republic. We're not even a democracy. And, uh, you know, when he was first coming in, they talk about the, the uh, recession. Well, the big investors, I mean, the giant investors, saw that a, possibly a socialist was going to be elected, and they backed out, man. Uh, and you know what? Okay, I'm an American European, and I don't go around saying that, but I put American first. African Americans should be the other way around. And if I see a black man on the street, I don't know if he's American. I don't even know if he's African. So, you know, I don't get that, but that's the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be. And why is there such adulation for uh, Obama from the black callers? Tell me why. I don't want to just hear he was the greatest thing in the world. And, uh, you know, that's about... That's about it, really, because uh, he was a socialist, and I'm glad as a Republican, the GOP did what they did to him, so we don't take this country any. The whole world's moving capitalistic, and he's trying to move socialist. Well, George, let care. me let me ask you what I've asked uh, some other folks. Is there anything from the last eight years that uh, the president and the White House has done that you think is is positive? Well, you know, I'm a horticulturist by uh, hobby, and I think that anything environmental he did was, yes, very good, you know. I think he uh, closed off some of the park areas so that these ATVs don't ruin them, you know. I think, uh, no, I can't uh, say about anyone on Earth that they were, you know, 100% wrong, except for the, the really, you know, Hitler and so uh, Stalin and stuff. But, no, this man was okay in that sense, but he was just okay. And when the gun thing happened, he never talked about the city by violence. He made it sound like hunters don't need these weapons. Well, you know, hunters are white, you know, so I mean, a lot of things he did did divide the country, and I don't think his legacy is going to go down as a great man. I, uh, I'm finished. Thank you very much. Okay, and other headlines from the New York Times today reports that a, a Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton uh, says Vladimir Putin's personal beef had to led to the hacking attacks. Uh, she told her supporters that she also laid the blame as part of her loss with Vladimir Putin. It says uh, Hillary Clinton lashed out at President Vladimir V. Putin of Russia on Thursday night, uh, describing the hacking against her campaign and the Democratic National Committee as, a, as an, quote, attack uh, against our country and had been motivated by Mr. Putin's quote, personal beef against me. Uh, Mrs. Clinton went on to say that uh, uh, Mrs. Clinton and her aides uh, have insisted that the loss had to do with what she described on Thursday as two, quote, unprecedented factors, the involvement of Russians and the suggestion by the FBI director, James B. Comey, days before the election, that the investigation into her use of private email server might be reopened but other Democrats have insisted the party needs to move uh, to more self-reflection and, and blame the Clinton campaign for relying too heavily on a coalition of black, Latino, and young voters while overlooking the white working class voters who gave Mr. Trump a victory of 77,000 votes in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. We're continuing our discussion about President Obama's legacy with Lance from Chicago on our independent line. Hi, Lance. 
Hi, thank you for taking my call. My feelings on Obama's presidency is that uh, maybe not now, maybe in 15 years or so, it'll be a it'll be a historical tra- tragedy. No other president faced the kind of destruction he has from the moment he was inaugurated, and all these people saying that he was divisive. I mean, when you get in the office and people decide they're not going to work with you right away, no other president has ever had that. What can you do? And in terms of uh, the people who called about the violence in Chicago, where I live, for example, um, well, the president can't appropriate money for programs. That's Congress. And Congress has no interest in working for the president. And he has to be president for the whole country, not just black people, as I am. So I think he was held to unrealistic expectations. He did the best he could with what he could. And uh, I mean, I mean, that's all I have to say. You can't really, you can't really argue against that. Well, Lance, let me ask you this: Are there any, th- are there any aspects of the president's legacy that was disappointing to you? I mean, he himself uh, has uh, taken responsibility, expressed disappointment about, for example, foreign policy, the situation in Syria right now. Is there anything that you think the president uh, should have done a better job with? Sure. In terms of uh, foreign policy, it's just been it's been uh, a game of whack-a-mole. The government has not been able to focus on more than one thing at a time. If it was Syria, they took their eyes off the uh, the Israel-Palestine issue. Uh, if it was Iranian nukes, you know, they were focused on that. And you know, I just wish that they had been more focused on more things and not just trying to tackle one problem at a time. All right, let's uh, take a look at the latest uh, news on the situation in Aleppo from today's Wall Street Journal. It says uh, the violence, the evacuation in Aleppo has stalled uh, as new gunfire opened up. Uh, It says the, uh, the operation to evacuate civilians and rebels from the last rebel held neighborhoods of Aleppo stalled again Friday with the Syrian regime and its opposition trading blame for an outbreak of gunfire that uh, that rebels said killed at least five evacuees. The violence came as uh, Turkey's foreign minister continued intense uh, intense shuttle diplomacy with Iran, Russia, and Gulf Arab nations to prevent further disruptions of the evacuation of civilians and rebels from eastern Aleppo and the collapse of yet another ceasefire. Let's take a look at what President Obama said yesterday about the situation in Aleppo. Uh, I felt responsible when kids were being shot by snipers. I felt responsible when millions of people had been displaced. I feel responsible for murder and slaughter that's taken place in South Sudan that's not being reported on partly because uh, there's not as much social media being generated from there. There are places around the world where horrible things are happening, and because of my office, because I'm President of the United States, I feel responsible. I ask myself every single day, is there something I could do that would save lives and make a difference and spare some child who doesn't deserve to suffer? Um, So that's a starting point. There's not a moment during the course of this presidency where I haven't felt some responsibility. That's true, by the way, for our own country. When I came into office and people were losing their jobs and losing their homes and losing their pensions, I felt responsible. And I would go home at night and I would ask myself, was there something better that I could do or smarter that I could be that would make a difference in their lives, that would relieve their suffering and relieve their hardship? So with respect to Syria, what I have consistently done is taken the best course that I can to try to end of the Civil War while having also to take into account the long-term national security interests of the United States. And we're talking to with you about your views of President Obama's legacy. Republicans can call 202-748-8001, Democrats 202-748-8000, and Independents 202-748-8001. Marsha's on our Democratic line from Pittsburgh. Hi, Marsha. 
Hi, thanks for having me. I think history is going to treat Obama as one of our greatest presidents ever. It's unfortunate that um, about half of America isn't even educated on their own constitution and the scope of his job. It's literally to head our military and to deal with our uh, foreign policies. And he can present policies for here in America, but he's got to have the support of Congress to make the laws. He has dealt with obstructionism and prejudice that's been unprecedented, as, as well as just corruption in our system. Um, I think he's, he's done a tremendous job, and our memories are very, very short. Uh, they last as long as the latest news blurb. He was handed a disaster. And he has got us on a path of recovery. We've bounced back quicker than other countries. Our own mistakes rock the entire globe's economy, not just ours. And you talk about the Middle East, Bush Sr., not even Jr. Uh, people don't remember Desert Storm. This president did not destabilize the Middle East. That came long before he took office. Uh, people really got to start researching the issues in depth get back to reading and knowing what they're talking about. Well, Marsha, let me ask you this. Is there anything that the president has done, uh, any policy he's implemented that have been uh, disappointing to you or that have met with your disapproval? I'm not fond of the, what is it, the TPP deal. They're saying that there's the potential to lose some jobs here in America. But again, he's working on a global scale. I think um, even I fall short of my education on some of those issues. Um, Tremendous, tremendous responsibility on this man's shoulders. I see no self-interest in his decision-making, unlike this current nominee coming up. Uh, Trump's appointing some, some sharks that obviously do not have your interest at heart or mine. Uh, they're worried about their own wallets, and I think we're in for one heck of a ride. Okay. Donna's calling in on our independent line from St. Louis. Good morning, Donna. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, the, the number one reason Trump got elected was because of jobs, but I'm afraid he's such a big liar, I just wouldn't put much faith in that. And uh, I think Obama was a great president until he started uh, wanting to pass the TPP trade deal. Uh, we need to fix the other rotten ones we got before we even think about another one. You know, we had a Republican Congress when NAFTA was passed, a Republican Congress when they passed the free trade deal for China. The Republicans fought Social Security, Medicare, Obamacare. Some people need to go read a little history because they're pretty well uninformed. And as far as Obamacare, that, that helped millions of working-class poor people finally get some kind of medical insurance. And if these greedy insurance companies are starting to leave the plan. It's time to get back to what the Democrats and a couple responsible Republican senators wanted in the first place, and that was Medicare for all. So these people that call in here, half of them don't know anything. If they watched C-SPAN the last 25 years like I have, they would know a little more. Ask them, who really passed NAFTA before Clinton signed it? Who passed the, the China deal before George Jr. signed it? These people act like they don't know much, quite frankly. Okay. Sweetie's calling in from Covington, Georgia, on our Democratic line. What do you think about the president's legacy? Thank you so much for taking my call. I want to thank you first for C-SPAN. And with Barack Obama's legacy, it's phenomenal. He came in with Michelle dancing with a little bit of a quiver, like he had a big task, but he was going to do it. When it came to the first term that this man did, I saw a change in him. So when he did the next term, he changed his whole emphasis on America. But throughout it all, he has stayed steadfast. He does not just crash his Congress. He says they know what they need to be doing. Gridlock is here. This is a part of America. He tells his governors in all the states, if there are emergencies out there, get to my office. Then he gives you numbers. Well, you should call these numbers first. But if there is something out there, then when he goes overseas, he speaks so good to everyone. 
when Brexit was going on in Britain, he spoke good over there. He has his family intact. And I want to say something about Donald Trump. I'm going to take the high road. I didn't vote for Donald Trump. But he is a businessman. And right now what he's doing is a little quirky. But I'm going to pray to God that he sits down, gets his business head on, and really gets those jobs. Because he promised people a lot, and they are waiting to see what goes on. Well, sweetie, let, that, me, let me ask you this. Your state and, and, and most of the states uh, in the United States went to Donald Trump. You, you talked about all, you, you gave a lot of praise to President Obama, but why do you think so many people in your state and elsewhere, uh, with their votes, express the desire for change? Do you want me to tell you the truth? Yes. Okay. Truth, well, I've only lived here for three years. When I first came here, I said to my husband, who's a Vietnam vet, uh, my daddy told me not to go down south. I said, I think they're still hung up on discrimination. My husband laughed and said, honey, if you see a Confederate flag, you have to understand, this is where the war was, so they're just honoring that. He said, but don't worry about it. No matter where you are, you're still an American. So there are more Republicans. There are more people here that just want to stay with the same mundane. They really don't care about the poor people. They're doing okay. So that's going to bring you over into the Republican area. And that is my viewpoint. All right. Thomas is calling in from Pennsylvania on our Republican line. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. And what do you think about the president's legacy? I think he's definitely going to get down as the worst president in history. Um, and it, it starts right when we get in, one scandal after another. You couldn't even keep up with all the scandals that he had. Um, and what, what scandals do you mean, Thomas? The Fast and the Furious, everybody um, you know, forgets about that. He was in on Benghazi. He could have done something. He could have answered his phone. There's still no answers on that. The families, they deserve better. Just one scandal after another with this guy. What about the plane load of money in Iran? I mean, that, in my opinion, he should have been thrown out for treason. That's, you know, that's traitor. You can't answer for that. A whole plane full of billions and billions of dollars of money. It's, it's, just, it's just insanity. And the biggest thing that I think... He is definitely a divider. I agree with the caller before. He's the great divider. Christians, Muslims, gays, straights, and especially when he came into office, without a doubt, racism was almost dead. And it is terrible right now. I mean, you know, I have tons of black friends, and we talk about it, and they're in agreement that, you know, it's, it's worse than it's ever, especially in your bigger cities. And and um, it was going the other way. It was almost dead, and it's definitely far from dead now. All right, Philip, on our independent independent lines, calling from Naples, Florida. What do you think about the president's legacy, Philip? Hi. Good morning. How are you? Um, thanks for taking my call. Um, president Obama is a humble man. He he doesn't get the credit. Um, you know, he inherited the worst financial disaster in the history of mankind. I mean, people don't realize that. Uh, Forty trillion dollars was lost. Um, this this was unprecedented, and you know people need to watch the big short or too big to fail. I mean this this, this was the greatest looting of a society in history, and it's it's scary. It's it's the white men. I'm, I'm a Caucasian, and it's the white men in suits. They are the robber barons of the 21st century. Okay. It's the, Pearl's calling in from Memphis on our Democratic line. Pearl, what do you think about the president's legacy? Well, as I say, I think he's been one of the greatest presidents that we have ever had, which I am a Republican. I am a, in the black race, but I don't look at colors. I look at people, and I think all people should be equally. But 
what's going in now is all of the rich. And they're going to be double dipping because some colonels is getting big checks and they're going to get a big check in the White House. So now you all talking about going to the slew with money. Those those men is already getting big checks from the government. So think about they're going to get a big check for serving in the White House. Why? We got people that in with education should be able to qualify for those jobs that's not getting two checks from the government. So the way I look at it, President Obama have done the best that he could do because he had no help. And I wish this nation, educated as they is, would realize he can't pay it's not any deals without his Congress and his senators. So don't put all the burden on him. Because, you know, he can't pass it, even in our state. The mayor can't pass nothing. But 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 without our people that sitting there said yes or nay. So the same way with the president. Sure. He can't Okay. Charles is calling in from Richmond, Virginia on our Republican line. Hi, Charles. Hi. Um why doesn't the president just start his own health insurance company? I mean, he just basically taxed every single person in America um, as they're being born into this country. Okay. Mike's calling from Pennsylvania on our independent line. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? I'm good. And what do you think about uh, the president's <clears throat> legacy? I think he's been a, a very good president. I, <clears throat> particularly, I think the Iran deal is going to get down in history in the long run as a really good deal because, number one, the Iranian people are very westernized. They're Persians, not Arabs. And they, they got the sanctions dropped on Iran right when there was an, an oil glut, which allowed Iranian oil to go on the market, which has kept the price of oil and the cost of gasoline and stuff for consumers in the United States to stay low to make uh, our life better in the United States. Well, Mike, let me ask you this. Are you, are you afraid that the Iran deal will be uh, dismantled in the next administration? Well, that's that's what they're talking about, doing. I think that'd be a giant mistake. Look look at the deal with Boeing. I mean, Boeing has a $17 billion deal to, to sell uh, airliners to Iran, which would do nothing but boost uh, manufacturing numbers in the United States and help, once again, the workers in the United States and the Republicans. They're just, oh, they're all against it for some reason. I don't understand. Okay. Uh, coming up next.